What's up, boyos? Um, so last week, or earlier this week, I don't remember, this week's been crazy. Um, I went over just kind of the big Yu-Gi-Oh deck. The large deck. The oversized deck of massive proportions of this box. And, uh, I figured this week, I love Yu-Gi-Oh to death. But, like, compared to another game that I play. Like, this is Yu-Gi-Oh, basically what I own, in terms of actual playables, and also there's, like, Fire Fists. But, I have a few decks of Yu-Gi-Oh. But, I think I've blown way too much money on Magic. I think Magic is a lot easier to just have a collection for, too, because Yu-Gi-Oh, um... You really have to, like, build specific cards. You have to get, like, specific cards for Yu-Gi-Oh. You can't just have, like, open a bulk box and play stuff with it. Unless we're talking, like, old formats. Um, you have to specifically buy singles for Yu-Gi-Oh. Or, like, structure decks or products designed to make decks with. Whereas, with Magic, the Gathering, which is the format, the, uh, the, the card game that I'm discussing today you can open probably I've opened 20,000 card bulk boxes by now and just scrapped them for good probably more than 20 more like 30 40 but a lot basically and just take good cards from them um I've wasted so much of my life and so much of my money on Magic the Gathering and now I'm gonna share my pain with you guys so cool beans starting off this is actually two decks um people are gonna hate me when i pull this out of the box but it's it's literally just um here let me see if i can move them up closer um i found a collection or not i found somebody i know found a collection of magic cards from a garage sale and they said yo dog take this and i'm like cool and I, I basically just, there were a bunch of cards in there for 8th edition, so I just made two decks of just 8th edition cards. This one's uh, red-green aggro. You got war chariots. Just stupid stuff. It's really bad. But this deck isn't meant to be played in anything other than against this deck. So this one is blue-black control. And I feel like these two, you know, I mean, my, my friends and I have workshop these decks for a while now and just went through and seen what's up but it's it's literally just like two decks meant to have fun against each other and be played against each other you know um and yeah so it's just a casual format it's good for beginners too because it's all uh it's all corset cards you know there's nothing too crazy in there. I mean, there's there's some cards that do weird stuff, and there's weird interactions, but that just adds to the creativity of the format, I think. And it, it benefits experienced players over newer players, which is fine, but I also think that helps newer players figure out, holy shit, I can do shit in this game. Um, so that's the only deck I have of that format. I'm going to talk about Pioneer decks now. Um, I haven't looked through a lot of these in a while. I haven't gotten to play Paper Magic in a while. Um, so, yeah, this is Mono White, not Humans, it's just kind of weenies, you know? Um, I built this deck probably, like, 2020-ish. I think this is one of the few decks that I bought singles for, like, I bought the Ben Olish Marshals. Um, but I pulled stuff like the Wedding Announcements, just from random, random fat packs that I've opened. So yeah, this deck just wants to, there's another one, but this deck just wants to put a bunch of little dudes on the field, buff them all up, smack people with them, um, and luckily the Pioneer decks do have side decks too. Not very good side decks, but side decks. Um, this deck is a classic, it's easy to play, um, you know, my friends, my, my play group likes to play, they like to play against it, it's, it's just good, you know. Draw a card, slap a card in the field, attack. Simple, um, but very effective in what it does, you know? So there's that. 
Um, next up, I'll go in Wooberg order with the deck boxes I have because I conveniently have Wooberg deck boxes. Huzzah! Um, this deck box it says blue red spells, but this deck box has been used and taken apart and used and taken apart and etc. Right now it's rogues, uh, blue black rogues. Um, again, just another budget choice. This one's a bit more complicated than mono white, so I don't know if I would loan this one out to, you know, people that come by and play as much. But it's still it's still a fun deck. Um, I need to get more curious obsessions, I think, because that is it is a good card, but. This deck basically it's it's a mix between an aggro slash stealthy strategy with a bunch of tiny dudes and um mill. So you can win through damage. It's just less likely than winning by milling your opponent out. Especially because we have stuff like Maddening Cacophony in here, which just says mill your half your opponent's deck, which is stupid. Um And yeah, the, the point of this deck is just to like The, the interactions, not interactions, it's just, it's simple, but there's also a deep amount of strategy to it when we're talking about, like, Zareth San having basically ninjutsu, and, um, it goes deeper than surface level, is what I'm trying to say. So, it's a fun, a very budget option, um, and yeah, these... This next deck is probably the one that I've actually bought the most. It's a uh, Dredgeless Dredge. It's a good one of the original Pioneer decks, actually. Um, where basically the whole point of the deck is to cast as little creatures as possible and have as many creatures as possible. You're basically going to mill yourself, uh, put stuff in the graveyard that reanimates, prized amalgam reanimates when something else reanimates, and you're just going to you're you're just going to take your deck and go like this and you win it's dumb um is it good dumb no if i play this against a modern pioneer deck i get my ass whooped much like a lot of the other decks that i have um these decks can be pretty outdated i haven't really bought new support for these i haven't bought crazy lands a lot of the lands in this deck are basic still you know um but you know like, I still have, like, the Dismal Backwater and the Jungle Hollow and, you know, the Lifelands. Not very good, but, you know, I just haven't gotten around to actually investing in better lands for a lot of these decks. Um, I'd rather just build new decks and have these and play them against each other. And I haven't really had that much of an issue with the tap lands, just because I don't go to, like, a super competitive environment. But, anyways, there's that. Oh god, the deck box is fighting me. Ooh. Okay. Now we shall go into red. Uh -huh. uh, this is Mono Red Wizard Burn. Probably the best Pioneer deck I own. Most quote-unquote optimized. This is literally just the scraps of one of the uh, the Challenger decks. For standard, um, I have pulled some new cards too. Kamana faces Kakazan is a new one. I don't have any of the crazy like forty dollars singles or anything. But this deck is just Pioneer's version of Red Deck wins. You play stuff, you burn people. Very simple, very fun, very effective, very cheap, and I think that's where I often find myself playing. I do need a fourth Kamano eventually. I just haven't, again, gotten around getting singles. Even though it's like a 10 cent single, but I digress. Um, yeah, not a lot to say about this deck. It's your basic red strategy. Red does red. But, you know, the synergies and the fact that we have a surprising amount of lightning bolts in a Pioneer now is pretty fun. Uh, green. Another awesome deck. Um, Mono Green Stompy. It's not Nykthos. I wouldn't call it Ramp because it doesn't have any of the big dudes. It doesn't have the Cavaliers or anything. It's literally just Steel Leaf Champion, Love Struck Beast. You get a bunch of dudes together and you smack people. Um, 
yeah, again, not fully optimized. A lot of forests, a lot of commons, uncommons, bulk cards, um, stuff I just pulled from packs, but it's, it's just fun to, you know, put stuff on the board and smack people in the face with it. So, and that's, that's all it's meant to be. And it's very good at doing its job. Again, a lot of these budget decks are very simple game plan, but, you know, they're still fun to play. And when you're playing them against each other, there's a surprising amount of depth in the gameplay. You know, I think that's probably the biggest difference between Magic is that, between Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh! is that Yu-Gi-Oh! you basically get your one combo straight. Or you get your one interaction down, and you either win or lose depending on which cards you draw. Whereas Magic, it's more like improv. Like, you have to think of strategies on the fly. You have to interact on the fly. And I think sometimes when I'm transitioning between Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic, uh, that's where I end up slipping up. Because if I play Magic and I'm like, well, if they do this, then I just lose. And I just don't play around stuff like I should be. Um, ran out of Ultra Pro deck boxes, so I have some sleeve, <laughs> some sleeve boxes for some of my decks. But it is what it is. Felt like I have a loose card in there, but whatever. Um, kind of a pet deck here. This is a Blue Green Flash. It's, again, one of the uh, Challenger decks. Not very modified. I have some cards in here that are better. But it's... I mean, the fact that they come sort of optimized already is a plus. Adding in the fact that this deck is just kind of stupid... Or at least it was in standard when it was around, and you know it's a fun deck to play. Basically, um, it teaches players a lot about value and like learning what play order to put your cards in. And I think that's pretty crucial when you're getting into more complex. It's like a good, it's a good gateway uh, deck between simple Magic and uh, high level Magic. I don't think I have a full fifteen for the side, unfortunately. I think I lost some of the cards in there, so I'll have to replenish that eventually. But there's Blue Green Flash. If I do another one of these videos in the future, look if I expand or anything, or if I do it with Yu-Gi-Oh! at some point. If I get more cards or more decks, then I'll try and have them sorted out. But this is more of just like a casual, you know... Just a casual random upload, I guess. So, this orange one is, um, white-black auras. I didn't, <laughs> believe it or not, I didn't, t uh, use the, uh, I got singles for this one. I didn't actually just use the Challenger deck. It's an upgrading creativity. Um... Strategy-wise, not really an upgrade in creativity. One dude, get a ton of auras on him, light pauses, overpowered. I think you just smack people in the face again. I'm, I'm... As we get into the commander decks, there will be more complex strategies, because commander, I think, is an overall way more complex format. But, you know. Yeah. In terms of... Pioneer, a lot of the budget decks tend to be a lot of the simpler decks too, you know, where you just slap stuff down and get synergies for free, basically. Whereas if you want to make a combo deck, it's going to be like 500 bucks usually. I think Lotus Field is probably the cheapest combo deck. Apple Green. Ho ho. This one is, again, another simple one. Uh, this one is Pummeler. This deck is... It is a bit more complicated than the other decks because you actually have to manage resources other than, you know, just tap land, play card. Um, and again, making value decisions between whether do I want a body on board with Gore, play, with Gore Clan Rampager or do I want a buff. Um... It's fun to just do crazy amounts of damage in one turn. And again, it's a super budget build. A lot of these decks are like 20 bucks, you know. Especially if you have the cards, it's going to be way cheaper. 
at least if you don't optimize the lands you know if you optimize the lands it's going to go to like 200 but with a lot of these decks the thing is you don't need to like don't get me wrong if you go against someone that with a fully optimized deck in a competitive environment then you're going to get you might have somewhat of a chance but chances are you're just going to get outplayed and outvalued that's why the monocolor decks are so nice to play because there are a lot of monocolored optimized lands, but you know you won't have to you know drown yourself in dual lands and random channel lands from Kamigawa that are like fifty bucks a piece. This is probably the most expensive pioneer deck I own. Um, Second Sun Control. It's Honestly, I'd say control is a smarter strategy than a quote unquote smarter strategy than um than like mono red, but most of the time, especially in this format, it's just brain dead. You just win the game for no reason. Um It's for players who want to feel like they're smart, but then they're just gonna play the counter spell, so why does it matter? Um, Approach of the Second Sun is a dumb card. There are a lot of dumb cards that promote Approach of the Second Sun. Impulse being printed into the format is really good for this deck. Um, and again, it's not too crazy expensive. I think I spent maybe a total of 40 bucks on this deck. I mean, I got lucky with the Disallows, but you don't necessarily need the Disallows. You know, I think most control lists don't even... They might play one copy of it. And even that, that, it's not necessary. Um... So that's it for the Pioneer decks. Getting into other formats. I do have a few Popper decks. They're not sleeved. <laughs> They're literally just, again, in the Dragon Shield. These This time it's the Japanese size card sleeves, but they fit in here, so whatever. Um, but I haven't gotten around to actually getting deck boxes and sleeves for these. Uh, this one is Red White Bully. Sort of. Again, this was just kind of made with scraps of cards that I own, so it's not fully optimized. I might get some more Glint Hawks for it, just because Glint Hawk is a fun card. Um, but this literally, you just play card, turn around, get value, your deck go this way. Um, so yeah, I think Popper is probably my, my favorite format to play, because like I was talking about a lot of budget decks and Pioneer and in modern and in a lot of other formats are just kind of brain dead put stuff on the field but with popper you can make a good a good deck strategy and actually have an interactive match and all that stuff without needing to spend several hundred dollars on decent cards you know i mean not that popper doesn't have decent cards but the decent cards are a lot cheaper um next popper deck what would you um it's blue something. I think this one's blink. Yeah, this one's ephemerate. Um, again, not optimized ephemerate. Just ephemerate. But, you know. There's still good card in deck. They're just not all good card. <laughs> you know? We're playing Chrome Courier, for God's sake. One copy, I mean, but, you know. It's Chrome Courier. Um, I think a lot of these decks are just suffering because with popper decks, I end up building them from just stuff in my collection. Whereas I probably should be buying a couple of singles here and there, even if most of the deck shell is here. That being said, just playing popper against my friends, oftentimes full optimization isn't really an issue for me, you know. Um, you're not going to get completely, absolutely murdered if you don't have three copies of, if you don't have four copies of Dawnbringer Cleric, because you couldn't find a fourth lying around. I don't even think they play for Dawnbringer Cleric, but you know what I mean. As long as you have the basics of the deck, you can kind of improvise with the rest of it. Um, this one's blue-black control, I believe, yeah. Um, Tolarian Terror. I'm so glad that I found this in my bulk box. I think it was one of the more expensive commons, too. I had to get rid of that card eventually. I don't like it in this deck. And I think there might be some banned cards in here. Like, I don't even know if Brainstorm is legal in Popper. I don't know if Treasure Cruise is legal. 
But again, these aren't really optimized at all, so it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah. Again, it's just destroy stuff in the field. I like the idea that control in um, control in popper is tech. It tends to be a lot more board state based than hand state based. Like there is still hand interaction. There are still counter cards. Like mana leak is in this deck. But you're going to be doing a lot more interaction with picking cards off the board one by one. And that allows for a lot more interaction between players than just like, I play card, I counter card, card goes away, that's the end, you know. And the last popper deck I am, that is within my possession, Hazola, is red-green uh, Cascade. Sort of zoo. Um, I fell in love with the Curdape zoo. And this is just kind of the evolution of that. I know what Ultasaur is a stupid card. I love it. And just kind of cheating big dudes into play is very... It 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 plucks my... Uh, the heartstrings of my Timmy soul. I don't think that was the an accurate phrase or a decent way to describe that. But, you know... We hear, we describe it. Alright. Last things. We got Commander. We got some more Commander. Um, I have a few Commander decks. I have a few more that I'm workshopping. But this is kind of what I have for Commander so far. I don't have individual deck boxes for most things I own. I think Pioneer is the only one that I got them with. And most of those are just the Dragon Shield sleeve boxes. Um, my code is, technic is usually just like... For Commander, I use the uh, the Ultra Pro Eclipses, and for Pioneer, I use Dragon Shields, although I might literally just switch to Dragon Shields for everything, because I think they're just better. I don't know. It helps me... It helps me organize stuff a bit better, and figure out where stuff's supposed to go. Um, and yeah, let's see. Okay, starting off with two Vaws of the Sunlit. Most of these are just structure decks, but sort of optimized. Tuvaz of the Sun Lich, just an Enchantress deck. You play Enchantment. Uh, you draw a card. You win game. Um, there are a lot of dumb cards in here. That's cool. I completely forgot that was in here. Um, there were a lot of... Blah, 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 blah. There were a lot of dumb cards in the, in the, uh, the, the uh, Commander deck that I was lucky enough to get before it went to like a billion dollars. I think I bought it for like 20 bucks over at Walmart or something when that was a thing. But... The deck has since spiked in price, and I'm very grateful that, you know, I got the actual deck before I wasn't, I wouldn't be able to, you know. Um, just a lot of enchantment stuff, a lot of buff stuff, there's a lot of cool things that just untap lands, tap stuff, return stuff to hand, classifications, a dumb card. Not overpowered dumb, it's just stupid, but I love it. Um, and they I think they really knocked it out of the park with this set. I had the Sahili deck a while ago, um, and you'll see the remnants of my complete enamoration with that deck in another deck that's coming later, but Commander 2018 was crazy. I loved it. I loved it so much. I think the decks were great. They interacted perfectly with each other, and the fact that they were all built around a very simple theme... So that if you pulled a card out of the deck, it would probably fit in the deck very well. Versus, like, if you bought the morph deck, you would have to buy singles because, you know, what are you going to do? So Tuvaz of the Sunlet's a very good card because of that. And they also kept on printing enchant enchantment support and good auras, you know. Like, uh, Seder, Seder Enchanter, I think, came out in the course of 2019. So, anyways. You go over here now. Um... Will help. I got very lucky, um, and I ended up getting quite a few of the uh, the Midnight Hunt packs. So I actually have some really nice zombies in here, other than just the uh, you know. I mean, the deck comes with amazing cards, and again, this is another this is another complete bomb of a a a commander deck, a commander product. It's phenomenal, and I'm glad I got it. Again, while it was decently priced. But, 
This is basically just like zombie do zombie thing. Make a lot of dudes. Make them big. Hit stuff. But also I like how um there are also some like hidden zombie synergies with will help and just getting to you know figure do I want attackers or do I want to draw cards for big plays um and having that choice between going balls deep in one strategy or you know leaving stuff out and going for another strategy like digging for a shepherd of rot and building your board and not actually attacking with it you know um I mean shepherd of rot didn't come in the deck but you know having having that leeway of Figuring out what game plan you want to go to based on the situation that you're in is really nice. And that's why I love this deck so much. I think, I don't I don't really think I'm going to, yeah, this is another stupid card, Gem Palm Polluter. Um, but I think this is one of the decks that's going to stay with me for a while. And it's going to stay one of my favorites for a while. So, there's that. This is my Bugius deck. Um, this is basically the deck where I think I, it's not a curse, it's more of a blessing, but whenever I pull a super rare or expensive card from a pack, it ends up fitting perfectly into this. Um, so, yeah, uh, sacrifice, just make a bunch of dudes, throw them into the stratosphere, burn people for a billion damage. Simple deck, but it's still incredibly fun to play. There's some great combo plays. You can just attack with a big dragon. That's an option. Um, this one, I... <laughs> so the stupid thing is when I was young, I actually did get the commander deck for Prosh. But I just ended up selling it because I didn't understand what commander was. Impact Tremors is a really nice reprint from a recent set. Um, I did go to the, uh, the pre-release, so that's why I have the... Uh, I did go to the... Uh, the Wilds of Aldrain pre-release, so that's why I have the pre-release cards and the, uh... Some, some new cards in here, like Lich Knight's Conquest is another great one. But, you know, sometimes with this deck, this, I think, actually... I'm sorry, I keep on interrupting my train of thought, but this is actually probably my favorite card I own. It's a Fuller Hollow Death Calf Glade, and I just pulled it randomly, and it's gorgeous, and I'm... Dude, I love it so much. I don't care how much it's worth, it's beautiful. Um... But, you know, this deck is just like having creatures to sack for value, but also being able to just sack weenies and still get value off of that, you know. I put in a lot more token generating cards in this deck once I figured out that that was a game plan. Like, I always wanted this deck to be a sacrifice strategy where I sacrifice dudes for value, which that is still very much a part of this deck. But I also under began to understand once I put the Blood Artist in this deck and the Zulaport Cutthroat. Um, the value of just creating dudes every turn and throwing them, or eating them, and dealing damage and attacking with a big dude. Um, it's just dumb, it's free value. Bunch of little guys. Uh, yeah, there's not much to say. It's sort of stupid, sort of brain dead, but at the same time, like... You're going to be able to do a million things and just get so much value off of, you know, minimum effort. I think that's, that one's going to be another mainstay. I think those three decks are probably my favorite commander decks I own. Oh, wait, no, I lied. Um, <laughs> this might be my number one right now. This is basically just a stock Metro's deck. Um, I think the, th the theme of this deck is literally I'm only going to use cards with Old Border. I haven't really gotten around to upgrading it, mainly because I haven't actually spent money on the uh, the singles. I'm not really going to go through this one, because again, I haven't touched it. But this deck is so nice, man. It's it's a combo strategy, it's a just giant card strategy, which, again, Timmy. Um, it's just so fucking fun to play against people. Um... And it's not, like, crazy overpowered, too, you know? I mean, it is great, don't get me wrong. It is a very powerful deck, but you're not going to instantly win the game on the spot. There's no infinites or anything in this. It's literally just value, 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 big guy, big guy. Play them for cheap, play them early, swing in. And it's it's just so fun. 
if you have a chance to pick it up, do it. It's incredible. Um, Vampire, again, another good one. And another one that I pulled a lot of cards for. Um, just randomly, from packs, from my collection, I pulled this. I've considered making her the commander for the deck. Uh, Olivia Crimson Bride, but I also kind of just like Strathan. And again, cheating stuff in the play for free is really fun. I'm more of like a value to me than a, uh, a, uh, my deck overpowered to me. If that makes sense. Like, I like big dudes, but I also like draw card. <laughs> I like big field, but I also like big hand. Yeah, it's dumb. I pulled, I think I pulled, and this is the, you know, stupid flex. I think I pulled these two in the same, uh, I pulled both Olivia's in the same fat pack. Or whichever, you know, I pulled them in the same day or something like that, you know. So it is, yeah. I, again, this is just another thing where I got lucky. I got a bunch. Here's another stupid card that I just pulled. Um, but I got a lot of just great cards for it. And it's just been building and building and building over time. Again, it was born from. It was born from a commander deck. Like a commander precon. But it's evolved into something better. You know. I think I think that's the beauty of magic is that you can buy a product. You can buy just one product and just build on it as your collection grows and the deck grows with you, you know. So yeah. Dossie's Vampire. And the last one, I we're kind of ending on a sour note here. <laughs> it's Rogues again. Um, again, this is an upgraded deck. But it I think if I were to get rid of one commander deck, it might be this. You know, I love this deck, but AI already have it in, Pi in uh, Pioneer, and I think I like the Pioneer version better. Or I might like this one better, I don't know. But I just happen to have a good amount of mill cards. I think the issue with this deck, and, you know, with a lot of other decks that I end up making, is that, like, I'll make it, I'll play it once, and then nobody ever wants to play it against play them played again nobody ever wants me to play it against them again and i understand mill isn't crazy fun and i've taken a lot of the overpowered cards in here like madden and cacophony is in the pioneer deck now because milling 50 cards from every opponent is stupid um but i just i never end up touching this deck you know i think it's just been sitting in my box never played for months and months and months and probably years and years now. I think I've just held on to it because it's a pandemic deck, you know. And I got it and it was something to keep me interested in the game and, you know, loving loving life during a time where it was very difficult to love life. Um, so there is that sentimental attachment, but in terms of like, you know, I'm okay letting it go if somebody's like, I will give you, I will give you money for deck, or like if you know someone comes in and they want it. Not saying that is an offer for people to come and buy it on, you know, over YouTube. I don't think I'm gonna sell this online, but you know, if I had to get rid of one deck, it would probably be this out of my entire collection, including the Popper decks, um, including the Pioneer decks. I think. As much as as stupid as this deck is, and as as much time and effort I've spent optimizing it, I just it I never play it, you know. But anyways, Das East Collection. Hope you enjoyed video. Um, I might come back and give another video once my collection's been updated. Once I build, you know, I have plans to get more Yu-Gi-Oh cards sometime in the future. Once I start getting an actual stable income. Um, and there are some great budget Yu-Gi-Oh decks that I've I've actually been doing research, so I don't overspend. And I'm excited, you know, to see just what I can make. Um, but thank you all for watching. 30 minute video of just me showing random cards on screen. Also, I didn't want to start my video with this. Excuse the wall in the background. I'm thinking of getting a poster or like 
finding a poster for my room to put back there so you guys have something more interesting to look at than, you know, drywall with cracks in it. But, you know, we're here. So, anyways, love y'all. Thank you guys for engaging with the uh, the Big Deck video, too. And uh, for just watching my content. I really appreciate it if you just swing by and, you know. Anyways, have a good day.